morning, good morning. <clears throat> this is Minister Nehemiah Newman once again, coming to you from Shadydale Church of God, 4626 Trawwood Street, Houston, Texas, 77016, with Darius Miller, the pastor. And I'm the Sunday School Superintendent. I'm going to be bringing a lesson this morning. But before we go into the lesson, let's go to God. The most gracious, kind, heavenly Father, come before you this morning with a heart of thanks and praise. So grateful and thankful, dear Lord, that you allowed me to see another day. You gave me one more opportunity to say thank you. You gave me another opportunity to praise you this morning, dear Lord, and, and I praise your holy name right now. Just thanking you for you being the God that you are, that you being a loving and kind and compassionate God and forgiving God. This morning, I just praise your holy name. I just give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praises, dear Lord, because they are, you, you deserve all the praises. They all belong to you. But just thank you for giving, waking me again this morning, Lord, and, and uh, did I sing the sunshine shine, shine one more time? And like I say, I'm just praising you for who you are and for where you are. I'm praising you for being my God and my Lord. Praising you, O Heavenly Father, for you being God. All along, being God all along. Oh, Heavenly Father, I'm just thankful and grateful this morning. Thank you for just waking me this morning. <clears throat> Dear Lord, closing my right mind. And a portion of my health and strength. Dear Lord, you picked me up, put me on my feet, and you started me out on my way. Oh, Lord, you didn't send me out high and dry. All the basic necessities, Dear Lord, that you said you would supply was all on point. And I just praise you this morning for you being a God of promise. Thank you when you woke me this morning. I didn't hear any disturbing phone call. My family members as well, us both. And I am thankful this morning, Great Max, you just continue to bless them. Bless their health, Lord. Bless their family members. They going out of their household. They going out and coming in. And the Lord just bless me the same this morning. Bless my household, my health. <clears throat> bless my family members. My household, my going out and coming in. My Lord, I ask you to just bless Entire Shader fam Shader Dale family. Mr. Pastor First Lady, continue to give him that, that strength that he needs to continue to lead your people. So let's bless us all this morning, dear Lord. Bless us all across this, the land this morning. <clears throat> dear Lord, and I'm just thankful and grave. I pray when this Sunday school lesson is all said and done, on the sun, I pray that somebody get this get something out of this lesson, oh Lord, that will change their life ever. Now, Lord, just be with me as I bring your son to school lesson. Just ask you in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Now, <clears throat> like I said, this is our sixth week of our Sunday school lesson, October the 6th, 2024. Like I said, this year, uh, gone, getting on the way from here. You know, and uh, what we're going to talk about this morning, we're going to talk about, we're going to be talking about uh, David this morning. How David has sin. We're going to explore the Psalms, traditional thought, to have been written by David. After, the, after he committed adultery with Bathsheba, he had her husband killed and was confronted with his sins. David acknowledged his wrongdoing, pleaded to God, pleaded for God's mercy, and asked that his heart be and spirit be cleansed. But you know, I like for before I go and get into my lesson, I always like to my redeeming our time. And then, like I say, it's October the, the 6th, 2024. This year is going on the way. So we out there redeeming our time. Are we making the best of our time? Missing our time good, Lord. And uh Doing what we're supposed to be doing out there for the Lord. Doing other people how we how, how God the good God bent to us. Are we out there showing love to one another like God showed us? We are. We need to uh, be out there showing how good God was to, to us. Helping one another. Like I always say, if somebody out there home and, and we gotta make rest to get them some food. Thirsty. We got to make sure they got something to drink. And Lord commanded us that we uh, take care of our enemy as well. 
So if we're not doing that, we're and not doing God's will, we'll never be in the kingdom of heaven. We'll never make it. We gotta keep his commandment. Like I said, he commanded us to uh to to love our enemy. And we gotta love our enemy. We got to be out there uh, making disciples. How many that we need to bring other people to the cross? Uh, if you don't want to try to stand before God and ain't trying to bring nobody else to to the cross, well, I don't know how good that's gonna look like on, on your resume. But we need to be out there doing God's will. So let's get out there and do what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, that's done. I already said this uh, week six of our Sunday school lesson, October 6, 2024. It said, what is our studies about today? And this included us, not only David. It is challenging for people to acknowledge that they have hurt others and made amendments for what they have done. When David says for action, sin, action came. When David sinful action caused harm to others, he repented and found forgiveness in the Lord. And we're going to be see, looking at this from Psalm 51, 1 through 4, 10 through 12, and 15 through 17. What those topics are going to be about, we're going to be talking about sin, forgiveness, and the Holy Spirit. So, uh, so we're seeing what David done. It said it is challenging for people to acknowledge their wrongdoing. It said, but David, said for action called him, called harm to others, he repented and found forgiveness in the Lord. But the Lord looking for more than forgiveness. We'll see what it is as we go through our lesson. Let's read our Bible background and see what it said. It said, David was not the perfect king yet. God Testified concerning him. I had found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. And you'll see that in Acts 13 22. They say, Why did God reject Saul as king and appointed David instead? We said, Each king of ancient Israel and Judah made mistakes. But the Lord was looking for a repentant heart. Not just repent. A repentant heart. Not just not forgiving our repent, but he is looking for a repentant heart for a leader who was truly repentant when his when he sinned. Now we're gonna be looking at Psalm fifty one as we go. It is traditionally a, a, a attribute of David. And to and, and said to be written by him after he committed adultery with Bathsheba and had her husband, Uriah, murdered. David saw more than forgiveness. And here we go. He asked God for a, 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 to renew his heart and spirit so that David could be a, be a faithful servant of God. And so when we sin and we don't hurt people, you know, some of them might just be saying, that God forgive me. Forgive me, dear Lord. But he say, but he say, he found repentance for forgiveness in the Lord. Say, the Lord is not looking, he's looking for a repentant heart. And we're going to see how it is as we go on in this lesson. So we've seen the Bible background. We know what our topic is about today. Sin. That's what David had done. He sought forgiveness from God and, and, we, and the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit uh, takes care of all this for you. And let's look at our first segment here of our lesson and see just what it's, what it's talking about. We see in Psalm 51, 1 through 4, where David have asked him for mercy, and God have mercy on him. Okay? Let's look at Psalm 51. He, he, what he's saying, have mercy on me. O oh Lord, O oh God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgression. He's asking the Lord because he done did something more than he. He's uh, really, really hurting him. And how 
many people that when they do harm to somebody else, do they really care? Some people don't eat that do harm to other people and, and move them right along. But we as Christians, and we hate somebody, we're supposed to do this. We're supposed to go to the Lord and ask the Lord, forgive us what we've done to this person. And this is what David does. He pleading now to God for what he's done. Look what he says in verse 2. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Verse 3 he asks, For I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. Verse 4 he says, I guess you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. So whatever happened, but what he done, he telling God right now, you right. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. But uh, David now is pleading for him. Thank you for much. Let's look in our commentary and see how further, how much more it is. Look at verse 1. To receive mercy is not to get something bad that we deserve. We have to go and ask them for, for, for repentance. And what does it say? The ultimate wages of sin is death. If you look at Romans chapter 6, verse 23. And sin is also, and sin also disrupted, disrupt our relationship with God in the present. And the writer plead with God to have mercy on him. <clears throat> Not because of anything the writer had done to deserve it, but because of God's unfailing love and God's compassion. See, when you go to God and ask him for forgiveness, you got to have a repentant heart. You ask God to clean you up again, clean my heart. If I've hurt somebody, Lord, and, and I'm coming to you now to ask you to forgive me. But before you do that, you got to go to God and ask God to forgive you. That's what it says. That they were not the perfect king, yet God testified concerning him. I have found David. Son of just a man after my own heart. So you're going to have to be seeking after God's own heart, chasing after God, loving God. And when you do wrong, when you do wrong, you're going to have to ask for forgiveness. And, and they said the writer pleaded with God to have mercy on him, not because of anything the writer had done or to deserve it, but because of God's unfailing love. God loves us. We had to go to him and ask him in his compassion and ask him to forgive. When you go to him and ask him for forgiveness with a forgiving heart and asking God to have mercy, God will forgive you. And say it, 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 but because of God's unfailing love and compassion, we say when we repent and are forgiven without sin, the Lord will blot out our transgressions. Clean it up and never worry about it again. He's throwing in the yonder seas up again and it'll never rise in trouble of us again. But we're going to have to do something. Do something. We just can't just go ahead on and thank God going to forgive us anyway. We got to go to God and plead to God to help us from what we have done to somebody else. God, please forgive us. God looking for somebody with a repentant heart. That's why he we got rid of Saul, because Saul didn't have that. But David had the repentant heart. Chasing out this. And like I said, like I read over here, and, 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 and let me see if I can find it again right quick. The, the psalmist's traditional thought to have been written by David after the, he committed adultery with Bathsheba and had, a, had her husband killed. And were confronted with this sin. David acknowledged his wrongdoing, pleaded to God for mercy, and asked that he is asking to, to, to uh, David acknowledge his wrongdoing, pleaded for God's mercy, and asked that his heart be and spirit be cleansed. 
So we got to go ahead and uh, clean it up. Give us a new spirit, Lord. Just, just, just clean us all up and let give us a new start. That's what it did, David. That's what he did, David, and that's the way we gonna have to. We gonna have to do. And uh, like I say, verse three says, "For I know my transgression and my sin is before me. For before me." So David is asking God have mercy on him. And we and uh and we see when when we repent and are forgiven of our sin, the Lord will blot out all our transgressions. It becomes as if he had no memory of them. As Hebrew eight and twelve, according to Jeremiah thirty one and thirty third chapter thirty four one and verse thirty four. See the often use a word picture that most people can't relate to. May God forgive us. Now, listen to this here. Like I said, I, I stayed with the scriptures. So, the scriptures got everything that we need to know. I might elaborate on it, but I don't want to say something that, well, that preacher, that don't know. That's Sunday school teacher said this, said that. I'm staying right with the scriptures, and then he all go with the scriptures. It said, the author used a word, picture, that most people can't relate to. May God forgive our iniquity of sin. It is as if we had been washed or cleansed. We actually give God to wash up, clean us up. He'll blot out all our iniquity. Clean us up, give us a new heart. And wash us clean. When a person is dirty, a good scrubbing may be unpleasant at the time, but it is well worth it in order to be cleansed again. Good beast of God. It's worth it to be cleansed up, cleansed again. Verse 3 says, God may forget our God may forget our transgression and sin when we confess to him. But we tend to have a difficult time with getting self guilt can be overwhelming. Thank be to God, the scripture says that he no longer holds our sins against us when we come to him in faith through Christ. The author knew the extent of sin effect. Whether we sin against other people, other person, or in the privacy of our own heart to through thoughts, through thoughts, we have sinned in God's eyes and done what is evil in his sight. Listen to what the word is saying. See, in a court of law, the defendants who are on trial enter a plea and respect to whether or not they are guilty. We can make excuses all day long, saints, Looking on, the one standing in the background and the one just going to be reading this when they get to it. They say, we can make excuses all day long. Our up, upbringing or treatment by family or friends or circumstances and so forth. But in, in the end, God, the righteous judge, is right in his verdict against us. I don't know if you understood what they say. This is David acting much. And it just kind of bring out other things for the author saying. So the author knew the scripture says the extent of, of sin that make what it'll do to you. It says whether we are sin against other people, other persons, or in the privacy of our own heart or thought. We have sin in God's eyes and done what is evil. In this sight. So we have to go to God's mercy. We see it when we don't know we don't sin. We, you know, I, I, let's kind of back up on that a little bit. We have sin in our thoughts. We have sin in God's eyes. But done what is evil in this sight. So there ain't no way around it. So anyway we sin, we got to go to God and ask God for forgiveness. And he'll do that. He'll do it. He said, we can make excuses all day long. 
uh, upbringing, our treatment, our family and friends, our circumstances, or so forth. But in the end, God the righteous judge is right in his burden against us. And we see when we do that, we ought to go to God and act, act God for mercy. And ask him to renew us. Give us a brand new, cleanse and give us a brand new start at this. That's what, it's, that's what David's doing now. David, well, he acknowledged his wrongdoing. When he, he, he committed a dodge against with Bathsheba. And then he went out there and had the man killed. And when he finally realized what he had done, oh my God, he started running to God, asking God to forgive him, give him, cleanse him, give him a new heart. God, but he got to, and ask him to forgive him. <coughs> when we do this, God will be just to forgive him. When you come to him in the right way, I, we got to be uh, really, truly seeking after God's own heart. He just can't go up there and say something. God knows what's right and what's wrong. So when we go to him for what we done done to other, we got to go there in sincerity. <coughs> God knows the heart. Excuse <coughs> me again. God knows the heart. So you just can't go say this, say anything. God uh, knows when you're sincere and ask him to give you a new heart and, and you repeat it. Now, <coughs> you know, look at Psalm 51, 10 to 12. When David is asking him, to renew me, O oh Lord. Let's see what it's saying. <coughs> Number 10, create in me a pure heart, O oh Lord, and renew a, steadfast, <coughs> renew a steadfast spirit within me. <coughs> create in me a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from me. Your present or take your Holy Spirit from me. See, we need to, we need to, we need that Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit wants us to bring it back, bring it back to to our uh, perspective. Twelve, verse twelve says, "Restore me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me." See, God have to do all this in that Holy Spirit. It's going to do this stuff what God does. He'll restore the joy of your salvation and grant him a grant us a willing spirit to sustain us and help us. We gotta have a new spirit then. Let's look at our commentary and see how folks what all renewing me is, is about. Look at verse 10. <clears throat> the author did not simply seek God's forgiveness. Now listen at this here real good. And that's what I'm saying. <coughs> Forget me. And uh, it goes further than that. Look what the author said. The author did not simply seek God's forgiveness of his sin. He asked the Lord to create in him a pure and clean heart to renew his spirit within him. Until all this is done, you still going to be burdened but you just got to ask God what it needs. Like what the son, the author is doing now. The author did not simply have said, seek God's forgiveness of his sin. He asked the Lord to create in him a pure or clean heart to renew his spirit within him. And, and listen to this here now. And this indicates a desire to have real change to take place on the outside so that he would not no longer sin against God. As Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's in Matthew 26, verse 41. Since we cannot stop sinning in our own power, this not this is called saints, Christians, look at all the ones standing in the background. This since we cannot stop sinning in our own power, we need God's transformative help. We need God. We can't do nothing by ourselves. If you try to keep and do this by yourself, it's going to get worse and worse and worse on you. We need God's help. God, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can change all this. 
<clears throat> Wait, let me say to be without the print it is that's what I just got to say. <clears throat> the, to be without the presence of God in our life or have the Holy Spirit removed from us, we would not be much of a life. This is what I'm talking about. We got to have God, that Holy Spirit, the one that's going to sustain us. He gonna, they going to take the Holy Spirit, the one going to be doing all this stuff. What God does. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. And this is where I'm at. That to be without it, the presence of God in our heart, in our life, or have his spirit removed from us, we could not lead much of a life at all. The Lord sustains all creatures, even people who do not know him, or care about him, or live because of God. But those persons who has been Reconcile to him and receive his Holy Spirit knows that that it is the Spirit who empower us and serve God according to his will. When verse 12, there is a great joy when we are saved in Christ and receive the forgiveness and love of God. Over time, now listen to this hymn. Over time, the things can lose their edge. And when we sin, the relationship grows distant. The writer continues to look to the Lord to sustain him and give him the motivation to remain faithful. That's what we got to do. We got to stay, stay the uh, chase after God. We, got, we just can't say, okay, it's done now. It ain't done. Um, the writer said, over time, those things can lose their edge. We can kind of fall right back into that same thing is what the writer said. And when we sin, the relationship grows distant. We got contentious for that. Follow God. Start acting and forgive And we all are sinners saved by grace. We rather continue to look to the Lord to sustain him and give him the motivation to, to to remain faithful, and we got we got to always have God. We can't do nothing without God. What kind of life it, do a person have without a God in his life? We got to have a God in our life, and this writer here is asking forgiveness, and it is showing relating to us too that in this time. That all this still related to us. It was like right there showing us how they were saying it. And he didn't just go away left. They feel real bad because what he done to, to, to commit a judgment with Bathsheba. Then he went ahead and had her husband killed. When, like I say, when David realized what he had done, my, 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 he just <clears throat> like the flipped. So he rushed to God and asked God to forgive me, clean, watch me, commit me a new heart, help me please right now. Have mercy on me. Some people can do harm to somebody and keep walking. Even some Christians. And go on about their business. But when that day comes, he gave me up time, he said, you left the word behind it, show you what to do. And if you don't follow his word, when, that, when, they, when we get ready to stand before judgment, and you think you finna enter, enter in? He was at the part me. I don't know you. Well, Lord, did I do that? Do that? Yeah, but uh, I don't know you. You didn't get it together. You failed to get it together. So that's why we need to be content, chasing after God's own, after God's own heart. And what it say? God knows that we will make mistakes in this life. Hear what I was saying? But when we are willing to confess our faults and seek his help, we will continue to grow in his love and his grace. His grace. All this stuff. 
God have mercy on when you do that, when you go to him. He have mercy on you. When you ask him to renew you, renew your heart, give you a new spirit. And then a broken spirit. Look at what Psalm 15, 51 and 15 has to say. A broken spirit. Let's look at 15. Open my little Lord and my mouth. We'll declare your praises. He's open his lips. Open them up. Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. We need to continue to tell God what just happened. You got a broken spirit now. Look at verse 16. This is what it says. You do not delight in sacrifice. He said, now watch this here. Watch this real close. He said, you do not delight in sacrifice. Or I will bring it, I will bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. He wants you a repentant heart. I can bring all that stuff to him. He won't accept that. He wants a repentant heart. He wants somebody to repent, a repentant heart. A broken spirit. They want you to come to him. Ask him for forgiveness. And he wants somebody with a repentant heart. Not just ask for forgiveness and go in on. He wants somebody with a repentant heart. Listen to what he's saying. <clears throat> now I want to read that again. You do not delight in sacrifices. Or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. Look what the, uh, verse 17 said now. My sacrifice, O oh Lord, is a broken spirit. A broken spirit and a contrite heart. You, God, will not despise me. Okay, let's see what else is saying in our commentary. Look at verse 15. And here it comes. The joy of forgiveness and salvation in the Lord is too good to keep to ourselves. We need to get out there and listen to what I'm saying. When I'm talking about redeeming my time, we just can't keep that out to ourselves. <clears throat> we need to go out there and let them know the joy of forgiveness and salvation in the Lord is good. Try it. to say the joy of forgiveness and salvation in the Lord is not good to keep to yourself. Watch this in. When God has redeemed us and given us a new life, our heart desire is to declare his praises to all who will listen. Go out there and tell them. This is what he's been saying. I'm to go out to the upmost part of the world and tell them about me. And tell them about me. So that they too might discover the treasures we have found in the Lord. And you're saying, God, take care of you. All you got to do is go to him, ask him for forgiveness, and the Lord just create me in a new heart. Don't just forgive me. Cleanse me up again. Fill me again with the Holy Spirit, Lord, is what David is doing in the right way. His expression. And that's what I just said. Now look at verse 16 and 17. The writer would have likely been a regular participant in the temple sacrifice that was prescribed by the law of Moses. But the temple sacrifice that was prescribed by the law of Moses, but he knew that sacrifices and burnt offerings are not ultimate what God is looking for. God is looking for somebody with a pure heart. Somebody with a, with, a, with a repentant heart. That's why he booted uh, Saul out. They, 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 they say all the sacrifice, all the, <coughs> excuse all the, the kings of uh, Judah and, and Judah, who were in purpose, they all made this day. But they just went on by their business. But when David found out and realized what he had done, oh man, he just went crying to God, Lord, please forgive me. Give me, create me a new heart, Lord. Just cleanse me up. And watch me clean. Say, oh, good. 
stuff it with water and stuff is good. <coughs> but when you've been cleaned up, ask God to cleanse you up, God cleans you up good. Well, let's remember all this here. And I want my my readers to know all this. I don't want to just, just uh, come make everything look all good and, and all that, paint everything red so it can look good or whatever color. I want my readers to know everything. I don't want to just paint, make everything look good and, and just chop up the word and, and my readers don't know everything. I want them to know what the Lord will do for you. When you make a mistake, even if you make a mistake, come to him. And it's the only way out of here, I've been saying. So if you don't ask to do to hurt people and then just walk on away with it, thinking everything is okay. Christians, when you stand before God and you're going to look for something, it ain't going to be there. Why? Because you didn't do what you thought had been done. Been doing we got to get out there and show them others how God has been good to us. It said we just don't want to do this here and keep all this goodness to ourselves. We want to get out there and share it. The good news what God has done for us. Let me see what else it's saying. But he knew that the sacrifices of burnt offerings are not ultimate what God is looking for. Let me see what else it says. Instead, the Lord desires to see humanity in us, a broken spirit or contrite heart that recognizes its own depravity. That is depending, and that is depending on Him. We got to depend on God. <clears throat> it ain't nothing that we can depend on. I can't depend on my bank account. My bank account, it can go away. That's what that's going to leave me. Stuck out. Car can break down, won't ever crank again. I was born until you can't feel the big bill it back no more. But like I said, the word of God was that forever. When all this other stuff done, went away, he said you can have the voice of sound and symbols. You can have all the knowledge in the world. You can take it and uh, sell all your goods and give it to the poor. But if you don't have that one thing, and that one thing is what is being talked about here. That love. You don't have anything. You don't have anything. He said, all that stuff will soon disappear. Word will stand up. So I'm asking this morning. Some saints. You can't depend on your good job or your bank account or your pretty car you got in nice house. He done warned you that before, all through the Bible. And that just, and that just, I can't remember just what scripture, but in Matthew, it's like, seek thee the kingdom of heaven first. <clears throat> and all this stuff will be added. But he actually said, when all this stuff will be added, don't just take this stuff and go and think everything's okay. And forget about me. It be your treasures up on this in heaven. Not upon this earth, but a malt, rust, the bees that come and take it from you. I'm here to tell you, it'll go away. It will go away. But you got to keep your trust in God. Continue to follow Him. If all this stuff go away, you got to continue to, to trust God. Like Job. Act Job. All that stuff happened to Job. I asked a customer to die. <laughs> Job said, I'm not this, not me. He said, I know I have done anything wrong. And I'm going to wait and see what it is. Job waited. Kept his trust in the Lord. And when it was all, when the dust and the smoke settled, <laughs> God told the devil, this man is perfect up right now. Joe got everything back twice in the morning. What he had, two or three more times, what his Bible strip said, got it back. But when trouble come our way, we got to continue to trust God. They stay bad. Trust in him. 
Stay steadfast and unmoved. Let's pray. Oh, great kind of heavenly Father. Come this morning with a heart of thanks and praise. With a, with a heart of thanks and praise. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for what you have shown us this morning. Shown us how to just depend on you. Like I say, it's hard for some people to recognize. They wrong. Like I said, they said, some people just walk on away. But David didn't walk on away. Saul and the mother king just didn't even worry about it. That's why God removed him. Brought David in the picture. Like I said, we're all singing. We can't start in the glory of God. <clears throat> but when we go to God, go to you, Lord, and ask you for forgiveness, you will be just a forgiveness. When all my listeners, some saints, all of them standing in the background, God will forgive us. And I said before, get on this ship with, with the Lord. And go. Even the poor ones that he said the poor be among you, always be among us. I'm telling the poor right now. Seek thee the kingdom of heaven. Seek God. Don't seek material stuff. Because like I said, all that stuff is going to soon disappear. But the word of God lasts ever. So get on this ship with, with the Lord. And come on, because at the end of that tunnel, Diane, he got all that you can ever want. You may have to suffer now. But they won't have to do this all the way. All the time will be gone and the most death and joy at the end of the tongue. So Lord, I'm just grateful and thankful for your word that I can tell somebody else about it. How good it is. How sweet it is. Now be with us, dear Lord, as we go through the rest of the day. It's acting in Jesus' name. Amen.